Will the president rein in the National Security Agency? White House Press Secretary Jay Carney announced Friday that the president will share his plan to change the nation's intelligence gathering next Friday. The president's been clear uh, throughout this review process that uh, we will not harm our national security uh, or our uh, ability to face global threats. The, the goal the president, I think, has set here is to uh, take measures that uh, create more transparency, uh, introduce reforms that uh, improve the system in a way that gives the American people more confidence. So just what will the president's plan look like? We are joined from Chicago by Jeffrey Stone. He's a professor of law at the University of Chicago and one of the five members of the president's NSA review panel that gave the president 46 recommendations on how to change the intelligence agency in a way that would protect the privacy and civil liberties of the American people. Jeff, great to have you on the show. How far do you expect President Obama to go? As we said, 46 recommendations. How many do you expect will be implemented? <laughs> well, I hope he implements the vast majority of them, but um, I don't actually have any inside information on that. Uh, my guess is that uh, he, will, he will adopt the, the vast majority. I'm pretty confident about that. Which ones do you see as being the most important? Well, in terms of the American public, the, <clears throat> the, the two, Section 215 metadata program is the one that's gotten the most attention. Uh, that's the one by which the NSA uh, collects phone call records uh, of American citizens and then um, uh, it utilizes that information when it has reasonable grounds to believe that a particular phone number belongs to a, a terrorist. It then queries that database to see whom that terrorist may be speaking with. Um, and that is very controversial because it obviously gathers up a huge amount of information. Uh, and our recommendations basically call for uh, a number of changes in the program that are designed to um, enable it to continue to serve the purpose that it does. Uh, in terms of protecting the nation, but at the same time to be more respectful of interest of privacy and transparency uh, and to make sure there's a greater degree of judicial oversight of the use of the metadata. By keeping the metadata at the telecom companies? Either at the telephone companies or to create a separate private entity that would have control of the data, um, but not to allow the NSA itself to hold, that, um, to, to hold the database. FBI Director James Comey has publicly objected to one of the suggestions that a court should first have to find reasonable grounds for an intelligence agency to compel a business to turn over customer records and customer communications. And the argument in general from supporters of the intelligence community is that after 9-11, you shouldn't be handcuffing any of the intelligence community's efforts to keep the homeland safe. How, how do you respond to that? Well, our view is that this requirement would not handcuff the intelligence community. Um, basically, a requirement of uh, judicial order um, is what we do for search warrants and for a, a wide range of other situations where the government is gathering information about American citizens. Um, and we recommend th that there be an emergency exception. So to the extent that time is of the essence and that, and that going to a judge for such an order would in fact impair the ability of the FBI to be effective, um, they would be allowed to go ahead independently with only after the fact review. So we don't think this would significantly or in any, any appreciable way interfere with the ability of the FBI to carry out its functions, but what it would do uh, would be to, inje uh, to inject a, a neutral, detached judicial uh, officer to make the determination as to whether there is, in fact, a legal justification to issue the order. And the, the panel recommended when it comes to the FISA court, the Foreign Intelligence uh, Surveillance Act court, to argue against the government when it comes to deciding what surveillance is appropriate. There, you think there's going to be little opposition that one will go through? Um, I'm pretty confident that one will go through. It makes a great deal of sense. Uh, when the FISA court was created, uh, it was primarily designed to deal with the, the equivalent of a search warrant request. Um, that is, the, the government would come in and say, we have probable cause to, to do a wiretap, and the judge would say yes or no. And even in the non-foreign intelligence context, that process normally takes place with only one side presented. The police officer comes in, gives the information to the judge, the judge rules. But what's happened over the 30 years since the FISA court was created um, is that technology has changed, the law has changed, and the FISA court occasionally has to resolve very complicated and important legal, statutory, constitutional questions. And when those issues arise, uh, as is always the case in the, our adversary system, it's very important that the judges hear both sides of the case. But and there so would, our recommendation, yeah, go on. I'm sorry, but you know, the workings of the court would still be completely classified, so there, how, how would you have any oversight to ensure that the advocate was being effective? Well, the advocate would be 
um, effective because in the same way that one would assume that in, in the context of any classified system, uh, you have talented, committed people um, who do the work. Right now, there is no other side being presented. Um, the, the FISA court's work itself is classified. It's important to remember that before the FISA court was created, the assumption was that the president could do all of this entirely on his own with absolutely no judicial supervision. So when the FISA court was created, it was a major step forward. It basically said the president no longer could do this on his own initiative. He had to get court approval. This simply builds on that and says not only does he have to get court approval, but when the court is dealing with an issue that's legitimately controversial, uh, there needs to be both sides represented. That's a, that is an important step forward. I do believe that the president will accept that recommendation. You're also looking, or you're putting out recommendations suggesting or protecting foreigners, people, uh, non-Americans abroad. I is that necessary? People would say, you know, we're supposed to be spying on people abroad, especially if it's uh, in order to protect uh, the United States. Well, of course we are supposed to be spying on people who pose a danger to the United States, um, but we have a variety of different interests that are come into play in deciding how to strike the right balance. Uh, one of them is our relationships with other countries. Uh, it's important to us, especially with our allies, that uh, they feel that we're treating their citizens in an appropriate manner, um, partly because we want them to treat our citizens in an appropriate manner, uh, partly because we have a whole set of arrangements with them and uh, if we are treating our citizens in a way they think is unfair, uh, that's going to jeopardize those relationships. And also, you know, we, we are part of an international human rights culture uh, in which we are supposed to respect uh, certain fundamental rights for all citizens, uh, regardless of whether they're Americans or otherwise. Our recommendations in this, in this respect are fairly modest, um, but they're designed to basically recognize that we live within a single uh, international community, and at least within certain, certain limits, um, it's important that we uh, respect the interest and the privacy rights and the dignitary rights of, of people elsewhere in the world, particularly among our allies. And Jeff, a very quick last question. Uh, people at the White House say that if the president does find some middle ground, that in the end nobody's going to be happy with what he does next week? Um, I, I think there's two, two reactions. On the one hand, nobody, well, not nobody, but many people will be upset because he, he did, because he did something or he didn't do everything. But an awful lot of other reasonable people, um, not the ones who do the most of the shouting, are going to understand that he made important steps forward that will uh, protect uh, privacy and civil liberties in ways that really matter to the American people without at the same time jeopardizing the security of the nation. That's exactly what he should do, and I believe that is what he'll do. Professor Jeffrey Stone, great to have you on the show tonight. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.